All right, Knights of Apollo, what is up, guys? Hope you're doing well, and welcome back to Middle Earth. So we are back playing uh, Dawnless Days, formerly known as uh, Rise of Mordor. This is a Lord Lord of the Rings mod for Attila, and today we've got a fun 2v2 siege battle. I mean, just look at this settlement. It looks awesome. You got this huge cliff right here in a road that goes up it. It's going to be absolutely brutal for the attackers to get through this defense, but we'll see how they'll do it. So on defense, I believe we have two rune armies with all their glorious Easterlings. And then on the attack, a little bit of a strange alliance. We got Isengard, of course, we saw them earlier, and they are teaming up with some humans, some men, the Darwinian men, with their glorious purple and, and grape-themed armor. They love their grapes, dude. You, you, you just, they love their grapes. They make fantastic wine. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, they are charging forward as we speak to these siege towers, and they're gonna get this show on the road. Now, I definitely think for Isengard, this is the place you want to attack. You want to stay far away from uh, those big freaking cliffs over there as possible because those archers are going to have such great range to fire down and harass your infantry. The Darwinian faction definitely has the more challenging task ahead of themselves because not only do they have to fight through this initial defense, which, wow, look at these guys. These look, they look awesome. Varig Warriors. Oh! Oh, that guy got hit right in the neck. Maybe like the lower jaw. Anyways, um, yeah, so they're they're set up on the walls with these glorious axes. And they are getting hit pretty hard by, by archers in the forest here. This I mean, imagine being those guys just like chilling, like doo -doo 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 -doo. all of a sudden death comes from the trees you just see little particles like that boom just come out of nowhere and just wipe you out that's gonna be terrifying anyways uh it's not a huge force that's defending and they actually just brought down the walls here and now they're running down look at this look at this play so we got some sentries here that just ran in and got a great charge in these axes but they're not staying long because the axes, you know, they're pretty good at anti-cav. So, uh, yeah, they're not going to stay in a prolonged melee. So, a nice little charge there by the cav. Good use. I didn't know they had... Do they have artillery? I did not see artillery. I don't know. Unless this was, like, already destroyed. I know in Attila, you can have the settlements kind of be, like, a little bit damaged before fighting. Anyways, uh, the Isengard is doing a good job here, overwhelming with the, the vicious Urukai. Now their backs are turned to some archers from two different angles. You got an archer over here. Let's check these guys. Oh yeah, we got some runic archers. They want a fight. And then we've got another archer unit over here on the flank. And this is the Varig, Varig Bowman. So yeah, they're getting some good hits on these, uh, these Urukai. Good use of the archers to really support the uh, these uh, warlords of Rune. Really awesome unit with a big glaive type of weapon. But the Urukai have decided to turn in. Oh, they're they're this is risky. Uh, this is not going to be good. They're out in the open. They can easily get charged by these guys, which is exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, ah, uh, it sucks. Isengard was it, it, it they were in a pickle. They're in between a rock and a hard place. Either stay there and try to overwhelm this unit while getting shot to bits or turn and face a new unit. I don't know. Now it's, oh, geez, that arrow tower just wiping out Isengard. Uh, Isengard has sent another unit of infantry. Oh no, these are berserkers. They got berserkers in the fight. I got a little too excited there. I do I do enjoy the Isengard Berserkers. They are very cool. Uh, but yeah, they are definitely going to win this engagement now that they have also the White Hand Stormers, which is like this heavy infantry, big old Pavi style shield. But they're going to go ahead and take the walls here. We got a little bit of fighting here and there on this side. Again, Isengard really spread out here. 
There we go. Nice little win for Isengard here. They're going to take this tower. Unfortunately, in Attila, you can't take towers. You can only destroy them. So that's a bit of a bummer. Here's a nice little win here for the Darwinian infantry with their kite shields. Fighting it out with these deadly axe. Oh, deadly axemen. But they are victorious, and the archers have begun bombarding the enemy position. See, they got their archers up here firing. Look at this. A lot of arrows are hitting the stone here. So, it, I, you know, honestly, it's not that great of a position. I, if the enemy was more over here, it'd be a little bit easier to hit them. But, you know, honestly, Dor the Dorwinian soldiers should totally just hug this wall and uh, just make it very awkward for those archers to get a position on them. So now we've got more Dorwinian infantry storming in. It's really the backbone of this army. And they should continue to honestly probably support Isengard here as they are dealing with uh, the, the Kuzate forces. If they can if they can get rid of a lot of these forces, I'm, I'm, eventually the battle is going to end up here, right? I mean, this is where it's all the juicy parts of the fighting is going to take place. There is a sizable force way over here. Um, you could capture this little capture point, too, to kind of help you out. But, yeah, they just need to hurry up and clean up the forces here and then start dealing with this massive hill assault. It is going to be brutal. It's going to be nasty. But let's go ahead. Before we get to that, let's go ahead and watch them clean up. We do have a general here. Oh, yeah. Look at these guys. The Bane of the Steps. Wow. Wow. Right now, they're the bane of Isengard as they ride around with their flags on their backs. They look so cool. Rune, uh, you know, of the Eastern factions, Rune, uh, even amongst all the factions, Rune's got to be one of the coolest looking factions. I would say they're right behind Isengard. You know, right behind Isengard. I just love the aesthetic of, of Isengard. You know, there's just something really cool about them. But Rune is right there. You know, they, they also look awesome. And uh, nice job with the cab. But the cab is getting absolutely focused right now against the enemy archers. So a costly charge. That is a huge win for the attackers. They just, they just like, super hyper-focused that general with the archers. And, uh, like, they just lurch style Boromir right there. Like, they just, that was, like, you know, that was that was brutal. And if they lost their unit in a matter of seconds just by that pure concentration of fire. That was awesome. Look at this unit in, in a tes testudo formation. I don't know what they're doing. They need, are they, ca oh, they're capturing the gate. That's what they're doing. So they need to capture this. Once they do, they can run up and get reinforcements up there. Uh, we do still have some archers left over here. We've got the Varig Bowmen. Um, they are not opening fire. They're saving their shots. But I think that's about it, guys. Everyone else is kind of retreating. We do have some Varig uh, warriors. But we do have a general. Look at this. Another issue here. You're getting into archer range. Is it worth it to run down this unit? I mean, it all adds up. But if you lose your general to, to archer fire, you're in big doo-doo. There you go. Nice little maneuver. Honestly, that was a cheeky little maneuver by by uh, Rune. Kind of setting this unit in the back here. Just get your general out of there. Just let the unit go. It's not worth losing your general, especially on attack. So uh, you're going to need every morale boost you can get. Okay, this is not a bad play. They're going to go for the archers. Now, if I'm... Yeah, I would just stand your ground and fire. You know, just stand your ground and let loose the arrows. Try to kill as many as many cab units as possible, or, or cab soldiers as possible, horses as possible. Let's see, this unit's like half strength, guys. Half strength. So this is really risky. Uh, you know, that's just the nature of Attila. The archer, the archer ammo is just so devastating. I I just don't think it's. If they can get a good charge off, it's just, it, you know, the problem is this unit is very good, even in melee. Oh. Okay. Okay, Isengard's coming to help. Okay. 
Okay, I think they're good. That was a good move by Isengard to move up his infantry like that. So now they can kind of save this cav. Very, very, very good play, actually, by the attackers there. That could have gotten pretty bad. And, and this is also a nice play by Rune. Notice how he's just running. He's just running out of there. But Isengard is going to be able to stop him in their tracks. This general, he needs to be done. He needs to be done, okay? In fact, I, is he dead? Oh, no, he's right there. Look at him. He's all bloodied. He's like, this was a mistake. You know, like, I'm all bloodied. I don't like this. Uh, oh, he's going back in. Wow. Well, I mean, it's it's pretty safe at this point. What is he getting? Oh, the tower's shooting him. And you got to capture these towers, too. You got to capture them because they are just chewing up units left and right. There you go. They defeated some archers. That's pretty big right there. So there we go. The attackers have taken the initial defense of this settlement pretty easily. Uh, you know, it's pretty evident that the defenders are going to concentrate most of their forces on the, uh, the final stand here of the settlement, uh, which makes sense. They only have, what, one, two, three different choke points, and they're all uphill. So it's going to be tough. Uh, I think what it's going to come down to is the archer play. If they can figure out a way to get these archers to exhaust a lot of ammo, because look, their ammo is like just over halfway. So if you can get them to waste their ammo or, you know, miss most of their shots somehow, uh, I think they have a chance. I think what they need to do is hug the wall. They just got to hug the wall and then, you know, advance forward. And if you get your men into a meat grinder, it's still going to be tough because you are taking on Easterlings. I mean, look, would you want to charge? Guys, would you want to charge this? I wouldn't. Um, but it's definitely, you know, if you can if you can cancel out the archers, you got a good shot. You got a good shot of doing something here. So we'll see. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and fast forward once they begin the main assault on the second layer. Well, this is starting much faster than I expected. So, uh, actually, pretty clever play here by both sides. So, the Darwinian infantry had some infantry with, uh, with skirmish ability. So, what Rune decided to do there was to charge a little bit to prevent them from throwing any projectiles towards their... Oh, look at this. Hold on. Hold that thought. Look at this duel. Who's going to win it, guys? Easterling versus Darwinian. Darwinian taking some aggressive jabs, but Rune answers back with another spear jab. We got a spear versus spear. Oh, he's going in with his fist, but it don't matter. Nice job by the Darwinian soldier. I kind of knew it was over. For the that was a cool animation how he threw his, uh, his spear and then just started punching. You knew it was over because it's like, you know, units don't throw their, their, their weapons away. But anyways, now we've got some some skirmish, some Darwinian infantry in reserve here supporting. And, oh, this Darwinian unit is dying pretty quickly. So they're going to send up reinforcements. And again, look at the archer fire is coming down, but it's really not that effective because they are holding the wall. They are having to, like, awkwardly position their units. And now we got a little bit of a skirmish battle going on from the streets down here. I don't know if it's worth it to do this, honestly. I would just save the archers for later, but it is use it's forcing the archers to use their ammo, so that's something. But I oh, a lot of breaking going on here. Do these guys use up all their ammo? No. Yes, they did. But now they're charging in two fresh reserves. Oof. This is gonna be an uphill battle, guys. Quite literally and metaphorically. Um, yeah, they just got... If they can get through this initial defense here, they've got a good chance of, of winning the battle, but it's easier said than done. I wonder if they set up archers right here. Yeah, they should set up archers here. I bet they could get a decent angle on the infantry from the flank. Ah, look at this. Guys, great minds think alike. Yeah, they definitely need to do this. These are some cool-looking archers, too. The Darwinian faction is pretty cool. They're very uh, grapey, Gra grape e g r a p e. Uh, you know they like their grapes, but they still look cool. The purple and gold—I mean, that's pretty fresh. 
All right, so uh, they're about to open fire. Here we go. Let's see how much carnage they can do here. Oh, that's pretty nice. Oh, they're going for the back lines. They're going for the... Oh, nice. They're going for the halberdier. That's actually uh, pretty smart right there because that's a unit that can that can hold like no other. My gosh. The, the Easterlings are tearing them up. Tearing them up. I honestly think that they probably have to send up a unit of archers like here to like fire at the infantry. I, I don't... It's tough. It's tough. Now, this unit's used up all their ammo, so that's a win. They still have some, uh, some, uh, Easterling archers. Ooh, look at that turn. And they are opening fire on what? What are they doing? Looks like they're going after the archers. Yeah, they gotta, they gotta try to get, oh, uh, it's tough. They're gonna get focused down, but they're almost out of ammo. They're almost out of ammo. And once again, we're just seeing Norwegian infantry go into the meat grinder with not a lot of success. They almost need to get a counter halberdier. So it's like they almost need to get these pikes up here. These watchmen with the, uh, the really cool twirly pikes. They need to get them up there just... Uh, because I don't think the archers can hit them that well while on this ramp. Now we got archers riding into the battle. Let's see what Isengard's doing. Not really much. Uh, he's, well, he's got a couple units over here. What is this? Half orc axes. And then he's got uh, the white hand stormers. So he's got two units coming up this way. But this is, this is going to be much more challenging to attack. Because the archers are going to have a much better angle. Once they get up about right here, they're going to be open for, for breakfast. I mean, they're going to be... They're going to be shot to bits, and they're already getting shot, and it's pretty... Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's bad, and I don't think you should be charging up the half-orc axes first because they are a two-handed unit, and uh, they don't have proper protection against arrow fire. So I don't know if this is... Uh, I don't know if this is going to play out well. I think he should have sent up the, uh, the swords or the shields first. Okay, so let's head back over here. Let's see how this is going. More and more breaking going on with the Darwinian soldiers. Let's get some close-ups here as they desperately try to kill these Easterlings. But it is just not happening, guys. And they're going to have to rethink their strategy before it's too late. The balance of power is still in favor of the attackers. Still in favor. So a great stand from from the east oh my gosh look at this dude they're like half strength now they're half strength was this a strat was this like were you using them to absorb ammo I, possibly this unit's pretty chewed up too did they get hit no it doesn't look like it i think he's just holding them in reserve why 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 are they charging this unit like this uh they're just gonna watch they're dead they're already dead they're already breaking. I think uh, the only thing I can think of is maybe they were trying to get the archers to waste their ammo. Maybe they just didn't care about this half-orc axe unit. Because this is more of a shock troop. It's more of a support troop. It's a unit that you want to try to get like a delayed, a, a delayed charge or a flanking charge. You don't want them to go in first. Okay, unless they're going after, like, some archers or a vulnerable unit. You don't want them to charge in pikemen. You don't, you don't want to. Look at this. Look at this. You don't want to send them into this. They're not going to do anything against this. Oh, my gosh. This is cool as hell, though. This formation. This Easterling formation. Look at this. Look at this. This looks awesome. Just the rustic gold and red. Their banners. This is a beautiful mod. I wish Attila ran a little bit better. It's not too bad for a 2v2, but, it, you know, if it's like a 3v3, 4v4, it gets laggy as hell. But this is cool. Nice Easterling defense. So, yeah, that's their stand. Let's go back over to the Darwinian experience. 
And you can see that it's come to a little bit of a standstill here. I think the attackers are trying to figure out what to do. Uh, they do ooh, they do have some grenadiers, white hand grenadiers. So uh, they do have some great choke point clearing units. And they also have the berserkers. So they still have more than enough to break through this defense. I think what they got to do first is try to get, oh, excuse me, try to get the archers to use up their ammo. If they can do that, then the usage of the grenadiers, they don't have to worry about getting shot, you know, and it, they're going to be able to clear up some areas. So it's going to be interesting. I think the attackers are more than capable of taking down this defense. Again, it's just a matter of getting rid of the archers. Okay, guys, welcome back. We've got another infantry push by the attackers. A combined force. Oh, we got some elites here. Oh, we got the the Vin, the Vineland, Vinland guards and the White Hand stormers. And that's right, we got the pikemen. Now the pikemen lost 60 men. They lost 60 men because naturally the defenders focused all of their archer fire on them as they were advancing. So you can see, yeah, this is uh. This is some of the men here, but that's just kind of the nature of it. You, you kind of just have to take the punches because I think in my professional opinion, my unprofessional opinion, the most important unit you want to keep alive is this one right here. This is the ultimate choke point cleanser. So let's get back over to this main fight. This is uh, I feel like a turning point. I feel like a turning point for the attackers. I think with the help of these pikes, with the stormers, with these guards, they're going to be able to break through here. Or at the very least, do a lot of damage. Let's see what the archers do here. Let's see what the defenders do with their archers. Are they going to conserve their ammo? Or are they going to exhaust it on, on what's attacking here? Because, oh, and then there's another attack over here. With just archers, it's not a big deal. Not a big deal. I don't know what they're, I guess they're just keeping them busy. But yeah, you know, if I was one of the defenders, I'd keep an archer unit full ammo or mostly full ammo, like back here and move them up. Keep them out of sight. Keep them in the, the fog of war. Move them up once I saw these grenadiers advancing. You need to, you need to keep one archer unit to to watch this unit. That's That's how you need to play it. That is how you need to play it. So here we go. Let's get back over to this fight. Uh, yeah, really good battle here. Really good battle here. The archer fire still coming in. That is a waste. That is a waste of ammo. Uh, sure, you're killing this pike unit, but but I really think there's bigger fish to fry. Yeah, and now these pikes are getting shot. They've lost uh, uh, 12 men, but these men are almost out of ammo. And the pikemen are kind of doing this, like, dodging thing. They're trying to dodge the shots. But yeah, the, here comes the pikes. Yeah, just stack the pikes. Stack the pikes. That's the best thing to do against this. There we go. Oh, now, now we're cooking with propane, guys. Here comes the Isengard pikes. You just got to take the punches. Like I said, just take the punches. They are about to break through this infantry. And this is the this is the porcupine of death that is marching up this hill right now. What are they gonna do? If they charge in these bowmen, they're dead. You're just charging into a wall of spears. I think what they have to do is let them in. You gotta let them in. They need to okay, first off, where is their infantry? They need to form up like a flank here, a flank here. Oh, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. They gotta let them in. Because if you let them in, then you can hit them on multiple sides. If you fight them here at this choke point, you are going to lose. Easterlings. Oh, here comes another volley. It sucks. It hurts. But you just got to take the punches. Look at this battle. Look at this battle. Oh, boy. Man, they actually broke some pikes here. Now they still have the Isengard pikes. Here come some guards. They're charging in to reinforce. They want through. They got to break these halberdiers. They got to. These archers, though, they've got only a couple volleys in them. 
If, if, if even that, maybe just one volley in them. Over this way, they're still trying to attack here. Again, I don't think they're too focused on winning here. I think they're just keeping these forces busy so they don't move to the other side. Here we go. Archers, no ammo. Got a bunch of archers with no ammo. Now, you can use them as infantry. What are you doing, Rune? Rune is sending in more reinforcements. Why? Again, I just think you're playing into the... the like into the attackers game here this is this little this environment is benefiting the attackers just because of all those pikes and I'm, I'm curious does isengard have any more pikes or yes he does yes he does nice now they're keeping the pikes over here because again i want i think they want to keep rune honest I want to make sure Rune doesn't give up this area. And now they're moving up crossbows. Oh, you know, the attackers were playing the waiting game. They said, hey, the start of this battle, really the middle of the battle is going to suck. Okay, it's going to suck. They're going to shoot us to bits. It's going to hurt. It's going to be annoying. But if they get a little too liberal little too free flowing with their ammo they're gonna have nothing for late game and we're gonna have all the ammo so he's gonna move up his crossbows and he's about to do work guys let him cook he's about to cook right here he is about to cook all right watch this you smell that can you smell what the isengard is cooking they're cooking up a plan of destruction it's about to go down right here oh yeah oh yeah there it is. That was an awkward volley. That's for sure. But yeah, they're going to run. Because what else are you going to do? What else can you do? You just got to get out of there. Over here. Um, hey, got to give props to Rune. They're still holding. They're still holding. They're about to break. They got... Okay, there we go. They got more... They actually have more halberdiers. So this is, this is actually going to be tough for them. It's going to be tough for them. The archers are pretty much all out of ammo. The crossbows are like, there's nothing they can do about this. I smell made flesh. <laughs> there they go. Like, seriously, like you got, they got to be laughing. Like, you're just going to stand there. Come and fight us. You know, like that's, that's literally... That's literally what they're going to do the whole time. And that's what I would do, too. If I was anybody in this battle, I would want to be an Urukai crossbowman. Because this, uh, this is easy. Easy mode. I could do this all day. <laughs> There's something about doing the Urukai voice, you know. And there you go. They're going to charge down. And that's all they can do. Now we got the White Hand Stormers coming to support. Honestly... Just keep retreating. Just keep retreating. Keep using those crossbows. Crossbows already have 39 kills. Oh, that's great. That's great. Now we got a bunch of archers piling up here to try to support. Do they have any more ammo? That's it. They're out of ammo, guys. And I'm going to call it right here. Uh, the balance of power is even. What are they going to do here? They can't go around it. You can't flank, bro. You, you locked yourself in. Oh, they're going to have to destroy their own barricade to get around. <laughs> yeah, they have to destroy their own barricade to flank. See, uh, they should have left this open. It would have it would have been actually pretty sneaky to put, like, if possible, an archer unit here. Like a hidden one. And then move them up. And then they would have been able to get some flank shots on the infantry fighting here. That would have been pretty sneaky. But the barricade is kind of ruining that. And, um, you know, I think Rune made a huge mistake. A huge mistake of using up their ammo so quickly. They should have preser preserved a unit or two with ammo. And, oh, now we got flank fire coming in. Where's this? Oh, yeah. Is this the general? Oh, it's Lurtz. It's Lurtz and his company of baddies. Look at this. Oh, baby. 
Oh, baby. That's a great flank right there. Flank fire. Where's Lurts? There he is. There's the mad lad himself. Weapons ready. And then they're firing. They're like, they're like, sure, we can't see the enemy. It's like, just fire up there. <laughs> He's like, what about our friendlies? <laughs> what about them? You know, like... I'm glad I'm not an orc, that's for sure. Or an urukai, you know? <laughs> More meat for us, you know? <laughs> uh, nice job getting some volleys off on these guys. The pikes are just being a real pain in the butt, and they have no answer for it. That was a nice little charge there. They kind of closed the gap between them and the pikes, but they are going to get blasted here, and this defense is going to crumble, at least specifically in this area. Now we got more infantry, and this is just going to be a big-time meat grinder. Yeah, they're still grinding meats here. Grinding meats. That's disgusting. Oh, the guy's going off. Love watching the close-ups. Oh, nice. All right, double kill. So a great battle going on here, but I, I think... Oh, here we go. Here we go, guys. The Grenadiers are moving up. This is a great... Isengard's doing a great job here. They really are. Uh, they they are seeing the battlefield very well, and they're selecting their battles very wisely. And now they're going to move up and use some Grenadiers. Check this out. Oh, yeah. Here we go. They're, they're going to go. They got him out. Please, look at the little pots. Oh, no, no. Oh, they're getting closer. Okay, they're going to get in range. All right, you guys ready for this? Come on, make this good. Make this good. Daddy wants some explosions. Wait, what is he doing? There he goes. He's throwing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is risky because, yeah, he only got a couple hits there. Because of all this retreating infantry. And now they got to retreat because they're in danger of getting attacked. Yeah, I don't know why they retreated. Like, I think he was trying to open up a, a window of opportunity to hit this infantry. Now they're coming back up. They're coming back up. Okay, this is not a great use of the Grenadiers. Not a great use of them. Let's see. They got to retreat them again. Yeah, just be patient with them. Can they, can they throw over the heads here? I don't know their range exactly. Oh my gosh. It's like they can't make up their mind. The balance of power is still even, guys. So this still could be a victory for Rune. All right, here we go. Yeah, yeah, they're going, they're throwing again. Let's see, it's just like instant fire pot of death. What are they doing? Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. A unit snuck by, and it was attacking them, and they just point blank, like, oil potted them. <laughs> it's cool. Oh, my gosh. Come on. Let's throw. Come on, throw. I want to see more. You can do better than that. They still have a ton of ammo. Come on, fire, fire, fire. Look at that. I think they can't. They're looking for a unit. Oh, there they go. No. Ah, it's not going to happen. All right. Well, still, they did a little bit here and there to soften up this, this unit. Oh, there they go. There they go. Oh, yeah. Some good hits there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's getting fiery. Oh, this is, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. The explosions. The grenades going off. Oh, that was odd. Oh, yeah. They are just annihilating these runic soldiers. That was beautiful. That was awesome. Totally worth it. Oh, here comes a fresh unit. What are you doing? Don't charge in like this. You're going to get blasted next. You're going to get blasted next. All right, here we go. Well, let's do it again. 
Come on, Grenadiers. Let's do it again. Let's see. Come on. They're being very patient. It could be because they don't they just don't have an opportunity to throw. There they go. There they go. There they go. Yeah. Woo! This is this is huge. Like this is going to very much help them here in this bat. Oh yeah. Come on. Keep it up. Just exhaust that ammo. Exhaust. They might have to send up more infantry to hold back this force because these warlords of rune are dangerous. Oh. There it is. There it is. Nice job. They're going to defeat these halberdiers. Oh, yeah. So now that the infantry is... Oh, they got to be careful here. They're going to get charged. Oh, my gosh. They're going off. Oh, they're out of ammo. That's it. That's all she wrote. And they got 155 kills. That was beautiful. All right, let's head back over this way, uh, where this fight uh, it looks like they're gonna take a more kitey, kitey approach, a kiting when they kite, you know, the enemy. Um, but yeah, they're gonna they're gonna kite here because it looks like they're trying to use their their crossbows. You know, oh, they can get an angle right here. They can get a flanking angle. Oh, this is juicy. Isengard man, he's he's he knows what he's doing with his angles. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. Fire, fire, fire. Oh, yeah. That's huge. Look at these guys getting toasted. Toasted. Yeah, just retreat. Retreat. Uh, this is such a good thing because if they retreat right here, right? Just retreat all infantry. This infantry will be exposed to crossbow fire. If this halberdier advances forward, there's enough space to get around him. So he should just retreat his men and just, just fight that way. Oh! Oh, look at this! Oh, this is not good. Remember the troops that were breaking the barricade? Well, they just... Well, they went through their own traps, and they just flanked all the way around, and now they have Isengard kind of surrounded. Oh, this is going to be close, guys. This is going to be a close battle. The Grenadiers have died. Uh... uh I don't know if they have enough to win this. They've got some elite units fighting back to back now. These guys find themselves surrounded. They gotta win here. If anything, I'd take this unit and turn them around a little bit and help out just a little bit. Well, this is gonna be this is gonna be tough. Okay, there we go. Isengard just won here. So now they're gonna. They're going to go for the city. Yeah, go for the victory point. They left the victory point completely undefended. That's going to force these guys to advance. They got to go. They got to go defend their city. And if I'm... if I have, Get these crossbows right here. Just leave the crossbows here and fire at the archers advancing. I would, I would have left them there. Because now the pikes are going to get shot at. Because these guys still have ammo. Yep. Oh, boy. No! Isengard! Alright, then the Dorwinian troops, they've got some troops here. Uh, they can also come around this way and support the fight, which I think they, they will have enough time to do so. And here we go, this is it. Now they've got it, they've got to charge forward. They gotta charge forward with these these Yeah, they're gonna get Oh! They didn't throw! Okay. Yikes. Yeah, this unit's screwed. This unit screwed. They got to advance. They got to advance. They got to fight. They can't just stand there. This unit needs to hold out until reinforcements get there. Isengard is on their way. They've got berserkers going berserk right now. Uh, and then we've got a troop going for the victory point. What a dynamic battle this has been. All right, now we got the crossbows up here. I, you know, honestly... I would have just left them up on this hill. I don't think it was worth it sending them up there. But Isengard has to do enough to slow them down. And I think they will. I think they will. Come on, Dorwinian. Hold. Hold. Reinforcements are coming. 
Here they are. Here they are. Running downhill. Full force. Berserkers. They're like, Rawr! you know, like, Rawr! just going total berserk mode. Nice play by Rune to kind of send some units back here to slow them down. Oh, where did they get the archer fire coming from? Where did that come from? Oh, these guys. He's still got ammo over here. He still has some ammo. Uh, I don't, I don't, oh yeah, that's definitely helping Dorwini. Oh yeah. And they're just going to keep, yeah, power through them. Power through them, Berserkers. Beautiful. Good job by Isengard to flank. Now they're capturing the main center here. Oh, this is a, this is going to be a race to the finish. I think Isengard should be able to hold here pretty well. I don't see these guys breaking through and they know that. Especially with the crossbows firing at their flank. So that sucks. They're going to have to break through over here most likely. Oh, Berserkers! No, keep them going. Don't let them stand there. Nice. They just defeated Rune right here. On, the, on this side. So now they can focus all their attention on this front. Oh, this is huge. Great job by Isengard to come over here and reinforce. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Berserkers going in, blocking shots. Oh, oh. This guy's like, you done. Oh, he's dead. Woo. There we go. They're breaking rune. They are breaking rune. Left and right. And uh, I think they got it, guys. So that was a gutsy play by them to kind of sally with their troops to try to get behind. The attacking forces, I don't think it was worth it. I think they should have, I mean, what they should have done, I think, in my unprofessional opinion, is that they should have, like, retreated from here and set up, like, ambush troops in the trees and the streets and then, like, hit them from multiple sides. That way they could have encircled, like, pike units and really good choke point units and, and etc. Uh, but, yeah, this was... This is a this was a close battle, a very strategic battle from both sides. And I also think they should have kept one archer unit alive and well. Cuz that's the other thing. When they when they pushed out this way, they had some archers with ammo. Those archers would have been better over here firing at the grenadiers that just exploded two or three units. You know? Uh so yeah, that, I think that was a uh, a mistake there by rune uh but now the balance of power it's still pretty close uh, but since they are about to capture this victory point which is honestly taking a long time um yeah they, they're trying to take it i think this general this is their last hope for any chance of winning this general is you know it's it's up to them so if they can get in there and get some good charges and maybe break some units there's there's a chance but it's very unlikely. Again, the bounce of power is not like completely trash. But it's not great either. So we're in the last two minutes of this battle, guys. So, I mean, here we go. This is, I mean, Rune might win down here with these archers. Because this is some depleted units holding this, this uh, streetway. Absolute carnage that took place on this little path. It's all going to come down to this. These three units and the crossbows. Oh, the general could easily charge this. I know they're in shield wall, but I feel like... Look at this. like riot police or something. Look at that. That's cool. And then they're, they're going to use the crossbows to open fire. Let's see if they can get some good hits on them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Oh, I see what they're going to do. They're going to try to win over here. But they got to hurry up. They have 105 seconds or the game is over because they've just they've taken the town center. So what they're going to do here is they're going to try to keep the pike stuck. Oh, this is actually pretty smart. He's going to put his back to the edge here so the cav cannot flank him. That's that's pretty that's pretty nifty. I think what he should do is just ignore him. Just get this cav, just get this infantry go around. And I that's exactly what he's going to do. Nice play. Nice play. Just ignore, just ignore. And he's saying, hey, if you go after these units, I'll be ready to charge you down. Nice. They got 68 seconds, though. I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think they have enough time. What a close battle this was. 
What a close battle. This is crazy. What a finish. Let's see. They got a minute now. They have one minute to take this. Do they do it? Do they do it? Now they're swapping the unit. They form shield wall. Epic style. Look at this. Hold. This is our settlement now. Yes. Yes, human. We work together. I totally won't eat you later. You know? <laughs> like what? Nothing. You know. <laughs> Alright, so there they're gonna they're gonna hold. Let's see, here comes the, this is the desperate charge. It's gonna lead to nothing. Lead to nothing. This general's gonna die. Crossbows should be able to open fire on the units that got past the men. And that's it, guys. That's all she wrote. A nice attack victory there. Uh, by Isengard and the Darwinian forces. This was awesome. This was fun. Very unique uh, defense and environment and strategy. It was awesome. So let's go ahead and end the replay. Look at the results and see how this one unraveled ter in terms of kills. Oh, that's right. We can't see kills in Attila because they thought that was a good idea. Uh, so yeah, the infantry did pretty well for Isengard. Uh, pretty even spread. Um, yeah, I, I mean, a lot of 184, um, 198 with these berserkers. That's probably the berserkers that flanked. 159 with the crossbows. And this was sent in by Meerkat, which uh, this was. I got this replay from the uh, Dawnless Days Discord, which I'll have link uh, linked down in the video description. Here's the Darwinian forces. They did pretty well with their archers. Or their infantry did okay. Their elites did pretty well. So again, pretty even spread, honestly. And then here is the runic forces in their kills. So yeah, really great battle. Really fun. It was a tough fight for Rune, but uh, it was a great battle nonetheless. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. It was a lot of fun. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. That means a lot to me. And I'll see you next time in Middle Earth.